Earlier this year, I was ready to come on and share my experience with henna and present it as a strengthening treatment and all these great things that I've read about. But the truth is, I've been using henna for about 10 years now and I'm not Rapunzel. My hair isn't down my back. So that hasn't been my experience with henna. I noticed that when you search henna damage, most of the people with straight hair are saying that it helped repair their damage. And a lot of people with curlier, kinky textures are saying that it was the source of the damage. And what I found was that people who use henna as a dye, very deliberate and pure with what they choose to put in their henna mix, whereas people with kinkier, curlier hair, maybe not as concerned about the color, choose to use a lot of oils, butters, and conditioning agents in their henna mixes. And it's important to understand that henna is a chemical and what you choose to mix with your henna matters tremendously. I believe it's the reason why I experienced bad results with my henna and I just wanted to share my story so that, and what I've learned from as a result of having that experience in order to help someone make the right choice, whether or not, or even how they want to use henna for their hair. So here are the three things that I've learned along the way with my henna mishap. So the first thing that you should know about henna it is permanent. So even if you have dark hair and you lighten your hair, the henna will still be there. I'm going to post a video down below of a stylist who lifted henna and you can see that there's still this like orange tint to the hair that um, is almost impossible to completely remove. So even if you use 100% body art quality henna, there is still a chance of it interfering with your color. The, the, the henna is permanent. It's permanently bonded to your hair. So even if you can only see the red and the sunlight, if you decide to go do colors later on, you kind of have to have a colorist. Number one, who's willing to risk it for henna because some colorists won't touch henna. And number two, for to be able to be comfortable with colors that kind of work with that tint that leaves on your hair. First thing that I think people should know before they use henna. The second thing that you should know Dye release is a chemical process. This is important, um, more important than I think I took for granted, like I never really gave full consideration for. So when you have, nobody really talks about henna before you dye release it. So the body artists, people who use henna for body art don't wanna use it because it allegedly there's no dye there, it's clear. So that's why it's traditionally um, referred to as dye release. So before dye release, it's clear, which I was like, okay, that, that, that makes sense. But then when I was lurking around the Facebook page of that woman who has a PhD in henna, um, anytime somebody asked like, oh, I just want the conditioning benefits of henna, do I have to dye release? Her response was consistent. Anytime somebody asks that question, um, if I don't want the color in henna, can I skip dye release? Her response is dye release or use Cassia. So even though the body art website says, you know, henna is clear before you dye release it, the woman with the PhD in henna doesn't want it in your hair unless you dye release it. So I wanted to know more, so I had to figure it out. So that's the second thing you should know. Dye release is a chemical process. And the way that happens is important. You want that dye release, according to the lady with the PhD, to happen before that henna hits your head. Um, I'm not a chemist. The three different stages that the dye molecule goes through, the first, Initial dye molecule or precursor to the dye has three hydrogens. The one that they say combined with the hair has one <laughs> and the one that's completely oxidized has no more hydrogen. So what I believe happened to me, belief, this is inference, this is me gathering dots from all over the internet and connecting them. If one hydrogen bond collects to the, <laughs> if one hydrogen bond 
can bind to the hair and something with no hydrogens can't connect to the hair could the one with three hydrogens potentially bond to your hair in three different places could that be the reason my hair felt like velcro because this molecule that can't even be removed with lightener was permanently attached to potentially two or three hairs um because i didn't dye release it properly that is a question <laughs> which leads me to the third thing that you should know about using henna is to be very careful um oils be careful when using them with oils butters conditioners okay because again so this dye release needs to progress in a certain way um the dye release the way that is recommended for people with curly hair is to do it with distilled water um with the henna with some amla to protect your curls and you know depending on what color you're trying to achieve with some cassia with some cassia or some indigo that's the way it's recommended anything else that you put in there it's a crapshoot you don't know how long it's going to take that dye molecule to release you don't know when or if it's going to release i i certainly don't know um and i spend a lot of time looking into what the hell this dye molecule is doing to my hair to determine whether or not i want to continue to use it you see for me if i didn't need the color i would just walk away um but i have a lot of grays i started getting grays when i was 14 years old and um <laughs> Yeah, I'm not ready to go full on Frederick Douglass yet. So if you're just taking henna powder and mixing it with butters and conditioners, you lose control of that chemical process. Um, unless you understand how each of those ingredients and those other products that you're using interacts with the henna, the best case is nothing happens, right? So they completely impede the ability of the henna to bond to your hair. But then like, if that's the case, what's the point of using the henna in the first place, right? So that's the best case scenario. On the internet, that you could take henna, put it in conditioner and still get color on your hair. I was like, oh good, I'm here for it. So I was doing that for a while, but I was so busy. I didn't even notice that it, it um, took a toll on my hair because my hair was just always up in the puff. It wasn't until I started making YouTube videos and I saw how my hair was like thinning on the ends. Like it was thinning all over because of part, postpartum shedding. I'm like, why is my hair so weak on the ends? But then I had started working at it. I had started doing like Olaplex treatments. I had, you know, started reaching for strengthening conditioners. I had started pre-pooing and I got my hair to a good place. And then boom, one henna treatment, that was all out the window. So yes, um, henna is a chemical. Um, you need to be careful how you use it. The moment I took that henna and added it to some conditioner, I lost control of a chemical reaction. And the results, like I said, was my hair felt like Velcro. The hair I had worked hard on, trimming, you know, conditioning, doing all these things to get to a good place was suddenly trashed in the course of one hinder treatment. I can count on reliably using certain products to behave in a certain way. I was doing roller sets. I was doing twist outs, I was doing braid outs, and I could get results. So wow. right before the new year, I said, let me go do this henna treatment because that's really just gonna settle, you know, that's really just gonna catapult my hair over the top. After I did that henna treatment, my hair felt like trash. Throw away the garbage pail, get a brand new garbage pail. Yeah, this is good. My hair responded to nothing. Everything that had been working for me, that had finally got my hair to a good spot, nothing worked. It wasn't dry. My hair felt like Velcro. I could not separate my hair. I could not part my hair. Every time I went to go do anything to my hair, manipulate it in any little way, even braiding and unbraiding it, it felt like, again, ripping apart Velcro. Like my hair was just clinging to each other and I could not get it apart. Um, I was disappointed. I was heartbroken. I just don't want people to experience what I went through. Um, and it seems like anytime somebody comes out 
and says that their hair has been damaged by henna and they're like oh you didn't use body art quality so you can still use body art quality henna improperly you can still use body art quality henna improperly um so just because it's natural doesn't mean um you could do whatever you want with it well everybody could do whatever they want with it but just know that you're playing with a chemical um and if you're not careful about how you allow that chemical reaction to play out you can end up with velcro hair like me um and long-term consequences of this are pretty crazy because right if you think about it your hair is always shedding um your hair is always shedding but it's normally not shedding in the same spot so if that henna binds up two or three of your hairs at the same place when one hair sheds instead of that one hair coming out the rest of those those other two or three that are bound to it are, have got to come out like while you're detangling your hair so that's why if you go to those videos of people who are complaining about henna damage they'll often complain of the same thing the tangles the knots it's more than just dryness like dryness can be fixed with a conditioning treatment um but once you start taking that conditioner and the henna and just hoping for the best that is not the place you want to be that is not the place i want it to be i should have just stuck with that releasing my henna in a known way i tried to like condense it into this cute little one-step process nope you got a henna and you got a deep condition or leave it alone <laughs> at least that's what i have come to the conclusion for myself and I make this video with the purest intentions of um, just hoping somebody will take a step back and just really think about what they're doing when they apply a henna treatment to the hair and the permanent consequences that could happen with it. Um,